Welcome to Magic Box Storytime. My name is Lottie. We are now going to find out what happens in Chapter 2 of The Tale of the Lost and Found. Linda and her new team are trying to find out where Fred the Ted has been taken. Chapter 2 The Lake Linda and her team of trainee finders left the office of the Lost and Found and headed for Bear Cage Mansion in the coldest of all the really cold valleys, setting their minds to work on Operation Find Fred the Ted. What with Linda being there, it was a grey day. But it wasn't particularly cold until after they'd walked past the car park next to the post office. That was when they all noticed oh, they were starting to shiver a bit. Linda snapped to it and got them star jumping, running on the spot and octopusing. Then she changed running on the spot to running forwards because she realised they wouldn't get anywhere otherwise. Soon the grey town was behind them and they found themselves going down into a valley filled with tall, dark fir trees. Black crows flew overhead. Ah! Ah! Sometimes they screeched and swooped and made Linda and the young people jump. <gasps> Looked like they enjoyed it too. But that wasn't the worst bit. The worst bit was that it was getting colder. And in the end, even that wasn't the worst bit. The worst bit, well, of this bit, there are other worst bits in other bits. <laughs> Prepare yourselves. <laughs> the worst bit was when Linda stopped and said, Team... It's even worse than I thought. The one in the red anorak who skipped and never ran felt his tummy go funny. I can see the gates to Bear Cage Mansion, Linda said. But it looks like they're on the other side of this frozen lake. What lake? said Jenny. This one, right here, said Linda. Everyone looked down and, sure enough, Right at their feet was the edge of a frozen lake which spread out before them. Far away, on the other side, they could just make out some gleaming gates. OK, said Linda. How do we deal with this, team? Hmm. Someone said skating. Someone else said rockets. Another one wanted to say something fantastic but couldn't because her teeth were chattering too much. And the one in the red anorak said, what about skipping back to the office to see if the real finders had got over the measles yet? Linda said they were all superb suggestions. But, she went on, we can't skate without skates. And do we have any? No, I didn't think so. We can't do rockets because rockets are for space, not lakes. Anyone whose teeth are chattering too much, please recommence star jumping, spot running and octopusing. And no one recovers from measles in one hour. No team, it's down to us. And I like to keep things simple, so I'm going with the tummy flop and glide technique. It's worked well for me in the past. Anyone who's got a high-vis jacket... <clears throat> like my Hilda here, get it out because they're slippery and assist in the gliding part of the exercise. Everyone was intrigued by Linda's idea and the ones who had high-vis jackets put them on and the ones who didn't held hands with the ones who did. Then they all lined up on the edge of the frozen lake and Linda gave the instructions. Right, everyone, she said. 
Stand at the edge. No feet on the ice, please. Steady. Steady. And tummy flop. And she tipped herself over. So she was flat on her tummy on the ice. Luke, Jenny and the others copied her. Push off, cried Linda. Careful does it. We don't want the ice to crack. No one other than Linda, Linda had tried the tummy flop and glide technique before and they all found it very enjoyable. Once they'd pushed off from the bank, they skittered out across the ice, dragging their non hives jacket friends with them. The whole activity made everyone smile, even the ones who were prone to bad moods. You can't not smile when you're sliding on your tummy. It's a medical impossibility. Suddenly, though, Linda said stop. It was hard because tummies don't come with brakes, but somehow they managed. Shh. Did you hear that? She said. Was it a cracking noise? No? Oh, think we're all right. Push off again. They glided tummily a bit further, but it only slid a few more metres when Linda stopped again. Shh. Cracking? She said. No? All right, nearly there. Push off. But then, almost immediately, she stopped a third time. No, she cried, I'm right. Cracking. Cracking. My ice is cracking. They all watched as little lines began to shoot out from the ice beneath Linda's quite big body. Luke, she called in an almost calm voice. I'm in the water. Require assistance. I'm now lodging an official call for help. Mayday. Immediate help needed. Luke had already reached the bank, so he took off his scarf. Then he took off Jenny's and tied it to his. Other trainee finders added their scarves, and then from the lake edge, they threw the scarf rescue rope out to Linda. She grabbed it, and in her Linda flat voice called, Pull me, pull me, pull me to the bank. They did, and it worked. Linda and High Viz Hilda flopped onto the muddy edge, and everyone shivered and comforted their icy tummies. After another five rounds of star jumps, spot running and octopusing, they felt a bit of warmth oozing back into their bodies and Linda thanked them very much for saving her. Let's take a moment, she said, to gather ourselves. So they gathered and Linda got a flask of hot coffee out of her backpack. She always carried it with her because she wasn't a quite expensive coffee in a cafe person. And that's the end of chapter two. Next time, we'll find out what happens next. Thank you so much for joining me on Magic Box Storytime, read by me, Lottie. Thank you. Take care.